Hello, everybody, and very welcome to our broadcast, the Brain Function Series, Together in Media Los Angeles. I am Mohamed Nami, medical cognitive neuroscientist. And again, here we are on our journey toward understanding the brain function and brain-related disorders and how we can maintain our brain health even better. And in the seventh episode of the Brain Function series, we're going to discuss about the motor system and the neuromuscular diseases. So we all know about the necessity of the, and the importance of our bodily functions, how we are using our limbs and how we're moving, moving around or taking, you know, purposeful actions. It's really important. So that we know about the significance of that, uh, you know, preliminarily, let's dive in and discuss more about it. Have you ever imagined that what really takes place in our brain when we extend our arm uh, to use our hands and, for example, to grab our cup of coffee and our drink our coffee? So apart from all those, you know, uh, like higher order cognitive functions, which kind of regulates or decision making, whether to do that action or not to do that action and uh, uh, how to do it, at what speed do it, and what, what, what should be the force of that kind of motor function. But, you know, whatever the case is, the key element here is the motor system. And strictly speaking, and from the evolutionary perspective, our motor system has in fact had a critical role in our survival. Actually, not only our survival, but the survival across the animal kingdom. Well, we know that movement is a key function regulated by, by the brain. And if we focus on the human brain, uh, we got to know a little bit of, uh, you know, anatomy and neurophysiology and to figure out the way that the brain regulates our motor uh, aptitude and motor functions in coordinations with the cerebellum and the deep brain nuclei and also the spinal cord. Where, where we collectively call them central nervous system. The central nervous system is uh, when, when, the, when the nerves are just uh, you know, leaving the spinal cord, then we have the peripheral nervous system as the nerve roots that they are going to serve the motor function by innervating the muscle and the musculoskeletal system. So this is like an interface. This is the co cooperation between the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, if you like. Uh, in fact, the, 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 the motor cortex in the brain is composed of specialized population of the neurons and tracts uh, which are forming the pyramidal motor system. So this is like, uh, like, a, like a descending uh, motor tracts and, and, and neural projections. All together, they are going to converge the motor data from the cortical areas of the brain, uh, taking them all the way down to the spinal cord. And uh, the cortical system actually teams up with the deep brain nuclei or stereatum, uh, which are uh, the, the, the deep nuclei or, the, or, or kind of like the basal ganglia in the depth of the brain, also with the cerebellum to fine tune our movements and to maintain our balance and coordination while we're taking purposeful actions. And that is the corticospinal tract, which transmit the motor signals from the motor cortex in our brain all the way down to the frontal segments of the spinal cord, where we have another set of specialized motor neurons called the alpha motor neurons. These alpha motor neurons are important because they are sort of serving, serving as an interface between uh, the, the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. So when we have this disconnection, then a disorder in a motor system and a movement disorder, including, uh, for example, like uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig disease uh, will show up. This is what we call it ALS, a tragic disease. Uh, we've heard about it most probably all of us. And uh, these neurons, these alpha motor neurons, they also transmit the motor signals through the spinal roots to the peripheral nerves, and they ultimately end up to the junction between uh, the nerve and the muscle unit uh, that is called the motor end plate. So when this system is dysregulated, when this harmony of the functions uh, just you know, tying that back to uh, the cortical functions from, an, from the cognitive or sensory perspectives, 
And also the aptitude of the motor regulation does not work really well. There might be some pathologies behind it as we discussed in the neuropathology segment of our talks in one of the other episodes, if you remember. Uh, we have different types of pathologies or underpinning pathological mechanisms that may end up with neuromuscular diseases. For example, when, when someone has a problem with the development of the motor uh, you know, system, which is an intricated nervous, uh, I mean, an intricated system in, an, in our central and peripheral nervous system. When we have problem with that development, we have neurodevelopmental delay, something uh, which happens in the cases with cerebral palsy or a range of different kind of, you know, neuromuscular disorders, which are genetically based or they are uh, kind of rooting in uh, environmental factors. We talked a little bit about the ALS, which is resulted from the degenerative processes of uh, which, 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 uh, which hampers the function of the alpha motor neurons and uh, the poor uh, uh, the poor regulation of the corticospinal descending drive, which which ultimately results uh, results in paralysis and uh, unfortunately that's a lethal disease. Uh, we have also seen cases with stroke, which have the cell death at cortical level. Also, uh, when when we when we see cases with multiple sclerosis, they might be suffering from different levels of motor function disorder because of the demyelinating process in place. And last but not least, you may have heard about the, the myasthenia gravis. And the myasthenia gravis is, a, is an autoimmune, autoimmune disorder or uh, like a dysregulated uh, neuroimmune system, which, which results in uh, like uh, the destruction of the chemicals in the motor end plates. So a chemical called acetylcholine is destructed and this is based on the dysregulation of the immune system or polymyositis or dermatomyositis. These are the pathologies that you are, you know, uh, uh, specifically targeting the nervous system. So that, that's pretty much of great importance to learn and to know about them, these kind of things to prevent and to predict the range of neuromuscular disorders because movement is uh, almost everything. So if we are fixed in place, we cannot move, then many different, you know, the dynamics of the brain and all different systems will get negatively affected and the diseases, diseases may show up. So uh, to learn and to have a better insight about the importance of neuromuscular disorders, number one. Number two, to predict and prevent this kind of disorders by timely diagnosis, if we have some uh, issues with lack of uh, strength or coordination of the movement, tremor or something, which is not expected by, by a given age, and we need to see a doctor or a special, you know, uh, uh, healthcare provider teams and seek diagnostic measures to make sure that we're doing fine or how. And also if the diagnosis is made by the neuromuscular disorder, uh, in, in, in ourselves or any of the people um, that we might be taking care of. We need to go for neurorehabilitation, medical therapy, and non-pharmacological uh, neurotechnology-based interventions. This is all about it. And uh, just sit tight for further discussions that we'll be having a chance for hopefully to discuss more in depth about other types of uh, uh, neural functions and neural systems to discover how the brain works and to learn more about the pathologies and how to counteract them. Until then, stay safe and be well. Thank you. Togetherness Media. TogethernessMedia.com